So we have a software-defined core with SDN and NFV. Um, we, can, we have a physical RAN attached to it, or we can also have cloud or software-defined RAN, uh, essentially creating a mobile SDI. Uh, this SDI infrastructure, we argue, will give you the flexibility of having multiple service abstractions, uh, but, we need, but we do need a control platform to enable it. Um, this is where Proteus comes in. So Proteus is a network service control platform to enable safe and rapid service uh, creation and evolution in a mobile SDI. Services and uh, components are captured in templates in Proteus, and uh, developers and vendors can design these and uh, uh, create associated implementations. So uh, next, service providers can come in and combine these different component templates to create and uh, uh, to create a service template. Finally, an orchestrator can instantiate and manage the service instances, and this is where the Proteus runtime is located as well. So this is uh, Proteus and the mobile SDI. Services and components are captured in Proteus templates, and we have a service agnostic orchestrator that can instantiate and manage them on top of the mo mobile SDI. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges and design principles. Uh, so one of, the one of the main design principles we use throughout Proteus is clean separation between infrastructure and uh, the service abstractions. Uh, so, uh, so, so another challenge here is diversity in the implementation of components in the actual SDI, because we have not really moved completely to a, a completely software-defined infrastructure yet. So for example, components from different vendors or the presence of a combination of both physical or virtual functions can be there. Um, so Proteus has uh, what we call uh, polymorphic templates. Uh, this basically means we have, for example, a component such as an eNodeB or a base station, and we can, we can either have a physical or a virtual eNodeB. So, uh, so we can have a generic eNodeB template and uh, more specialized templates that uh, mainly inherit from this generic template. Uh, the service provider does not have to worry about how things are implemented in the underlying infrastructure. Instead, uh, they can specify the requirement for a generic eNodeB, and the orchestrator will handle uh, the instantiation, instantiation of the right kind of specialization based on the service policies or SLAs of the service instance. Um, then there is the challenge of uh, mobility-specific requirements in our, implement, in our environment. Uh, so Proteus templates have elements that can capture protocol dependencies and the logical service topology. Um, secondly, the templates and the Proteus platform itself is inherently data-centric. So monitoring applications are plugged into Proteus that help it keep track of the current state of the SDI, so the template designing process is offline. Um, then at runtime, the Proteus platform instantiates these templates by mapping the service topology in the template to available resources in the mobile SDI. Here, Proteus is also responsible for performing uh, some resource placement since uh, mobile network services often have sophisticated resource placement requirements. So uh, for example, some service provider might specify a policy that they want some new resources to be deployed where they have the most of their customers. Um, so uh, the orchestrator has a resource placement module built in with a constraint solver, uh, and templates can be used to specify uh, repl repl uh, resource placement requirements using uh, language expressive enough to capture such details. Uh, finally, there is a challenge uh, in enabling service evolution and supporting multiple parallel instances, uh, potentially by various service providers. So other than the design principles I've already talked about, uh, Proteus also allows uh, template designers to specify a service realization plan, so which is basically the recipe the orchestrator will follow in order to instantiate, manage, and uh, evolve the service. So uh, designers specify this in a generic implementation agnostic way, and the Proteus orchestrator can then map it uh, to implementation specific operations based on what's currently in the SDI. So uh, next, Proteus supports components to be shareable between different service instances, uh, and designers can specify the details uh, of, such a of such sharing in the component templates. Finally, Proteus also allows primitives that uh, allow dynamic component uh, migration from one location to another in the SDI, and then traffic redirection using them. So for example, uh, components in one location, traffic going through it, migrated to a new location, let's say New York City, and uh, traffic redirected to the new location, and the original one is shut down. 
So uh, also note that this is not live VM migration. Instead, instead this is more of a live uh, component state transfer from one location to another. And uh, components do need to implement the required support API that Proteus would need to enable transparent migration. So this, this primitive basically helps in evolution as well because this is a straight transfer in a generic way and it can happen between components that can come even from different vendors or, from, or between physical or virtual components. Um, now I'll talk about uh, some of the use cases in Proteus. So uh, this is the 4G LTE uh, standard broadband service. So we have the radio access on one side, we uh, connect it to a core uh, on the other side. So it's a mobile network core with components such as MME, S-Gateway, P-Gateway, and there are some other components that I've not mentioned here. So I use this service as the uh, base case and show use cases for evolution uh, from this architecture. So the first thing we can do is that we can fundamentally support multiple instances of services. So you can create new services and you can modify the existing ones as well. Uh, next use case is the scale work from literature. Uh, scale keeps the original architecture but provides a more elastic replacement implementation for the MME component. So this has a load balancer. So we, here we are using replacement as a sort of uh, enabler for evolution. Next is uh, the S'more service. LTE EPC similar to LTE EPC but with IP substrate substituted with an SDN substrate and an edge cloud. So the original, so the regular traffic still goes through the uh, core but uh, selective offloading can also happen to the edge cloud. Uh, then this is MobiScud. MobiScud is again from the literature. It's an extension of S'more. Uh, its EPC evolved to support uh, more of a cloudlet like low latency offloading by adding uh, SDN substrate and uh, also pers users have personal VMs within, located within the Edge Cloud. So, uh, so this basically means that uh, as the users move, to maybe attach to some other eNodeBs or base stations, the, their personal VMs or PVMs also move in concert. So the regular traffic goes through, again, the normal path, and then there's offloaded traffic, and finally the UE moves, and the PVM also has to move. So here Proteus can help because Proteus has a very data-centric approach. It knows what's going on in the network. Uh, and so uh, service designers can come in and specify policies uh, uh, that, that, uh, work, that work based on what's currently, where, the current, where currently the UE is located. So finally, um, so the last use case is for a specialized um, architecture for IoT devices. So uh, it's a hypothetical future architecture. Um, so again, we have SDN, we have uh, an edge cloud with some uh, ar architectural components located within the cloud to handle uh, signaling uh, traffic that comes in for IoT devices because they, they, are, they will potentially be very large in number. Uh, there, might some, there might be some modifications to the E node B as well. So I talked about all of these use cases and uh, we have implemented templates and done evaluations for four of these use cases. Uh, so the 4G LTE EPC, multiple parallel instances, selective offloading using SMORE and uh, more of a dynamic offloading using MobiScud. Um, so based on these use cases, Proteus can uh, do safe, rapid, and dynamic service evolution using, uh, for example, uh, these particular use cases as, uh, um, as use cases. And then it can enable multiple mobile service instances in parallel. These can be variants of the same service or different services altogether. Um, and finally, uh, it has a mobile network cloud-like mobile network abstractions, which basically means it has, a, it tries to have a cloud-like, -like, sorry, cloud-like uh, control stack applied to a mobile SDI. And uh, this allows uh, uh, the single mobile platform to be opened up to third parties. So uh, I've introduced pieces of the architecture already, but here's the whole picture at a high level of detail. Um, so we have the template developer, which can be a vendor, uh, and uh, the design templates, and these get registered with Proteus and put in the template repository. So next, when a service provider comes in and wants to instantiate a service, uh, the, the orchestrator can just retrieve the related template from the orchestrator, 
from the template repository. Um, so we have uh, monitoring services plugged into Proteus, so we can get uh, the current state of the SDI. And based on that, Proteus uses this resource placement module to find out uh, uh, what are the particular set of resources that can satisfy the constraints of this particular service instance. And we have the network controller, which is uh, basically used for SDN flows, installation, and uh, other network setup. Uh, there are some other components that I have not really talked about here, but uh, due to lack of time. Um, so uh, the service providers can then come in and interact with the service that they have already uh, that, that have already been instantiated in the SDI through a service management interface. So this is what the topology looks like in PhantomNet mobility testbed for the evaluations. We have uh, New York compute, we have some in Chicago, we have some in San Francisco. Um, so we implemented and evaluated Proteus by creating templates for three different services. Uh, and multiple evaluations. I'll only talk about, quickly talk about one of these, the data-centric service management and migrating to a new location. Um, so uh, this is the, this is the uh, P gateway state migration. So it starts at T0, it takes a couple of seconds and uh, finishes at T1. The drop in the RTT is showing P gateway migration from a location that was farther away from the mobile user to one that is now closer to the user. So between T0 and T1, a couple of steps take place. So, uh, uh, so we have the service topology and uh, P gateway at the source location, let's say in San Francisco. Uh, and then we have, uh, so we first, first thing we do is we instantiate a compute at the target location, for example, in New York. So once we have that compute, we can then export the configuration and current state from the source to the target. So essentially creating a copy. And then finally we can use SDN to redirect traffic to the target and shut down the source. So this is sort of the generic recipe that can, that can be applied to any component with a template. So uh, Proteus, can, if once you have the support API within your component templates, Proteus can have this, uh, uh, the underlying support for redirection as well as migration and do, uh, do it transparently for you. So we focused on the, uh, in conclusion, we focused on the problem of mobile network service deployment and evolution being very slow, and that in order to meet the demands of anticipated future services, we would need to have very service abstractions and support evolution. Our solution realizes the fact that there is a trend uh, currently towards soft technologies or a mobile SDI, and we leverage that and create Proteus, a control platform that allows safe and rapid service evolution in such an SDI. Um, I'd also like to point out that we have uh, uh, a profile that we, uh, that we created and it's in the PhantomNet Mobility Testpad website and you can go and try to experiment with it as well. So I'll be happy to take any questions.